T-minus 17 seconds and counting. 15, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, go for main engine start, main engine start, 2, 1, booster ignition, and liftoff of the Space Shuttle Discovery, returning to the space station, paving the way for future missions beyond. Hey everybody, welcome to a, another conversation sheltered in place. Uh, I'm really excited. Uh, today we have Hajin Marshall, uh, who's going to jump on for a, a great conversation. Uh, and just to remind everybody, the purpose of this is to have conversations which will help folks navigate this current crisis, um, but to also be able to come out the other side of this stronger and more unified than ever. That's, so that's the that's the purpose of this. And so, uh, like I said, we have Hajin Marshall on board today. Um, she is the co-founder of Embassy. It's spelled E-M-B-C. It's a creative studio lab based in New York City. And her um, interdisciplinary creative practice combines various aesthetics and wisdom traditions. And it's our mission to connect art and technology in services in service of uh, moments of awe and wonder, uh, moments where the distracted mind is replaced by a profound embodied experience. And so everybody help welcome uh, Hajin onto the, onto the broadcast. <laughs> hey, Hage, how you doing? How, how, and and you're, com you're coming live from Mount Sinai Hospital in New York City, right? Yes. So it's we good. We are to live in the sub basement abilities research center in Mount Sinai East. Awesome. And can you tell everybody what you're doing there? Yeah. What, so what the uh, uh, there is an amazing initiative happening called Front Strong Relief and uh, Frontline Strong Relief. And uh, an amazing friend, Muriel Phillips, has invited Jacob and I on uh, behalf of Embassy to help collaborate in this initiative. And, and uh, who's Jacob? I, I don't know if I've heard of Jacob. Who's Jacob? Oh, that guy. Um, <laughs> he is my amazing partner who happens to be playing piano now for some doctors and nurses. So oh. hopefully he will join in at another time. Yeah, cool. So, so I didn't mean to interrupt, but I just wanted no, to know no, who no. you Yeah, so um, a friend, Muriel Phillips, who is the founder of Studio Elsewhere, um, their focus is on biophilic design in a lot of the like medical areas that help bring nature and immersion to uh, patients. And so there's this project happening where she has partnered with a longtime colleague, um, David Petrino at the Abilities Research Center. And, and they've always wanted to bring these relief uh, and recharge rooms to doctors and nurses on the front lines that also, um, you know, patients that are suffering from just lack of beauty and lack of care in the hospital setting. Yeah. And so it's just been in a really amazing um, experience in the midst of, you know, a crisis like uh, what's happening around the world to be in service right now uh, and, and keep our creative juices flowing of saying like, exactly. how can we show up every day and help people? Right, right. And so these, uh, the re recharge rooms, um, they're, we're, we're expanding very rapidly uh, thanks to so many people that are just, you know, supporting us and caring for us during this time, whether it's in, in kind donations or, uh, you know, literally coming in every day and, um, knowing that there's a risk, obviously, with the health, but really just wanting to share in their their gifts. And so it's just been a really awesome team. And uh, being here every day has been super purposeful. Yeah. And, and we're, you're going to give us a little bit of a tour in, in a second. But, you know, yeah. speaking, speaking of people showing up, we've got people coming in from all over the world that are viewing right now. We've got our mutual friend, Guy Reed popped in. He's in Seattle. Uh, Nasa uh, uh, Ahmad coming in from Afghanistan. And Ann Murphy from Dublin are popping in. If you guys have questions, just uh, type them in the, in, the, in the window there in the comment section, and we'll, we'll try and answer those. Um, and um, 
yeah, so you're you're at Mount Sinai. Just in case you're wondering, I'm not actually in space. So we just we just recently moved into a, a new home. Uh, in I'm coming live from Boulder, Colorado, uh, and uh, I don't have we don't have it. We're oh, what's really behind me is moving boxes. <laughs> so so uh, we'll uh, we'll we'll have to come back. Uh, uh, maybe ne maybe the next episode next week we'll have uh, a real background behind me. Um, so you've got the program going on, um, and it and it's a wonderful program. We talked to actually the first episode of of conversation sheltered in place was with Jacob, um, and it was from Mount Sinai. Uh, unfortunately, we had a technical uh, glitch, and we didn't get the recording of that. Um, but it's a you know it's a wonderful program. You know, it's really, really important that folks, especially folks on the front line, are finding time to, to recharge and, and to get some downtime and to um, because, you know, nobody does anybody any good if, if they themselves are, are not functioning at 100 percent. And so self-care becomes self-care becomes really, really important. So um, can you can you tell us a little bit about what you have seen and what the results have been and, and what are what are some of the things that people are doing to to recharge? Uh, so every day looks a little bit different, um, and there's amazing positive outcomes from that. But generally, there is this um, almost like a childlike wonder that comes out, from, comes through people when they step into this space. And there's this feeling of like, wow, disbelief, just how is this here? And what is this? And can you describe it? Can you describe the space a little bit so pe so folks know? Yeah, what, it's a three thousand square foot um, center in the sub basement here at Mount Sinai, and there are de a couple of different rooms that we've converted into the recharge rooms, and that looks like um, projection, custom made music from Embassy, what Jacob and Tim have uh, recorded. Awesome. Um, Really beautiful. And Tim is Tim Fain, a famous violinist, um, Tim mm -hmm. Fain, composer, Tim Fain. Yeah. Yes, yes. And uh, and then we can't, unfortunately, we can't have real plants in a basement. Um, and there's also a lot of like sterilization codes that we have to be mindful of to make sure that, that we can sanitize it every time it's used. But these, uh, we got a really awesome donation actually from the SIL, which is a incredible company and boutique here in New York and they had donated us um, such plants like this where most people can't tell that they're not even real yeah um, and so what does it look like to create a space of comfort and tranquility where you're you know as much as possible those of us that you know we shouldn't be going outside we should be responsible and and staying home um, and we miss nature so much. So to kind of bring that inside and create a, a space that you do feel connected to nature sure. and, you, and you feel, um, you know, that, that oneness, the aliveness that some of us are definitely feeling like devoid of right now. Right. I know I, right. myself, I'm, I'm trying to do like weekly, uh, forest bathing type hikes through um, Greenwood Cemetery here in New York. And that has just been really, really life-saving for me. So yeah, I think it, I, to offer it um, yeah. in these rooms. And of course, you know, there's no such thing as recreating that the magic and the grandeur of being in a forest or being near the mountains. But um, yeah, we're just able to get as close as possible and create these really beautiful settings and it has just such a profound impact that w how much we really, really do need beauty in our lives and how it has been so undervalued um, in a lot of ways in our culture of almost like an afterthought. Cause yeah. you know, when you think yeah. about a hospital, you think about how sterile and cold it is. Right. And it kind of feels artificial. hard. Yeah. yeah. It feels artificial. It feels very hard. And, and do we as humans, especially in a time of need where in, for healing, is that really how we're caring for not just our minds or our mental health or our physical health, but holistically, you know, there's so many other dimensions of 
of what makes us human and beautiful right. that I think it definitely, yeah, overlooked. You know, you know, there's a, there's a, uh, com a similarity with, with life on the space station too, because mm -hmm. on the space station, it's a very artificial environment. All we hear is the sounds of pumps and fans and, and, um, mm -hmm. you know, everything is sterilized. <laughs> You're in a very sterile environment. You're basically living in a white room. And, um, What's interesting, you know, my, my first flight, you know, I was very, you're very tense because you, you've got, you're, you're in this hostile environment. It's, it's an attack of the senses. You've never been there before. Um, you've got this incredibly packed schedule that you have to keep up with. And so it's a very, it's a stressful, it's a, it's a very tense period. And I remember thinking to myself, I feel relaxed all of a sudden. Why do I feel relaxed? And I realized that somebody had put on music on, you know, iPod driven speakers in the module that I was in, and it was an instant connection back to Earth, mm -hmm. to home. It was an interesting connection back to home, and all of a sudden, involuntarily, my body relaxed. And so, I, I think what you're bringing out is that um, we we need ties to normal normality, normality. We need ties back to nature. We need t t ties to the natural world, um, and that is something that's ingrained in us. Uh, and so, we can't stress it enough. If you have the ability to get out into nature in a safe way, even if it's just walking through a cemetery like Agent does, I, I think that's really, really important. Are there, are there any other comparisons that you can draw to what you're doing for the frontline healthcare workers and what people can do? You know, there's a lot of people that are really hurting, you know, um, being cooped up, you know, the, the people who are honoring the, the shelter in place and are really, you know, doing it the correct way um, is coming at a price for folks. You know, it's, it's, you know, very demanding to be cooped up in, in your apartment or your home uh, for extended periods of time. Um, and, 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 you know, a lot of, a lot of folks don't leave the stress of work behind either. They're just bringing the work into their home and uh, trying to balance all that at the same time. So is there anything that we can, any comparisons we can draw for folks uh, at home? I think, and we've had um, different doctors and nurses come through and they say, wow, why is this not a no-brainer to have at home, you know? And it, it's very simple. Um, it's not like we're using the, you know, crazy advanced technology to create these environments. And I think that that is also what makes it so special is that it is in simplicity that you can experience, like, you know, that saying less is more quality yeah. or quantity. I mean, it's so true, especially in like these cases. So we've had people say, I never even think to just take time for myself and to sit and why don't I light a candle and why don't I listen to some music and just really have a moment, you know, of just real presence and quiet. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, from the wisdom traditions, you know, the three pillars of what it kind of like being grounded is silence, solitude and stillness. And I think that, now is the time to be practicing those things where, you know, most things in our culture, whether it's voluntary or not, it's like, this is kind of the, that, uh, I almost look like there's like, I imagine growing, you know, I grew up watching WWF. So it's almost like there's this collective, like headlock happening and saying like, it's time to just slow down. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah so, uh, I think that, that, People are, are, are learning. There's so much to be learned right now. And it is in a way, there are sil silver linings and there are ways to look at, you know, the different gifts that this, you know, seeds that might be planted right now, people are suffering. But I truly believe like suffering also can lead to great joy. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so whether you're at home and alone and you can just find ways to remind yourself or take you back to places of nature or, or, you know, beauty that really like speaks to your heart. Um, I highly recommend creating those moments mm -hmm. and, and not feeling guilty about it. Like, I think there is also something to say about people feeling like it's, it's, there's not permission to, to be okay right now. So yeah is media is just, you know, exasperating all the negative things. And all you hear is constant updates about whether it's the death 
toll or or the you know the virus toll that it, you know sometimes it's not helpful to just keep allowing those things to like take over and, and feed you know your brain in such an unhealthy way so, yeah, how, did, how did you phrase that it's it, you don't need to you, you shouldn't feel guilty for being nor for feeling normal or how did you phrase that for, yeah i think that um it, it is something that when tragedy happens there you know the human spectrum of emotions and the way that we cope and deal with things immediately whether it is grief or shock or trauma um we we you know we sit in that but i think also the tendency of sometimes human nature is getting addicted to the things that are actually harmful for us and so when you you feel anger or sadness or fear you can start to just want to almost subconsciously reinforce those mm -hmm. patterns mm -hmm. and it's just not helpful yeah. so we got to look for ways to kind of have those wake up moments of saying we you know what does it look like to yes sit in grief but also live in a place where we always remember that there is a macro perspective that's always happening and our reality is so much greater than what our minds tell us you know right right well now you yeah, talk so, about, you talk so, about, yeah getting to your point um, yeah. i th i do think that we need to talk about the permission of it's okay to in a hard time also have moments of joy and also you know still have fun or laugh you know right. it's okay to laugh it's like what a great coping mechanism to yeah. not store the trauma in your body and just let it go and so if you if it's you know something as simple of just hey i just want to like play a game virtually or whatever it is trivia or what you know and just have some fun right. that's okay yeah because yeah. i know people don't want to talk about it it's like yeah. how are you dealing with all of this and it's only negative and dark but yeah. it doesn't have to be all that you know yeah so so you, you talked about silver linings and i want to talk about silver linings in a minute but i also want to give shout outs for people who are popping in and saying hi so Lisa from New Jersey says hi. Um, Justin Lee Radford, you may have heard of him. He says hi. Uh, um, Susanna, Susanna uh, from Denver wants to know um, uh, if there's a playlist you could recommend for recharge. And Parveen, mm -hmm. Parveen says hi from Bangladesh. Um, and and Polly says hi too. Just popped oh, in. Oh, hello everyone. Yeah. So wonderful. So you talked about silver linings. Can you can you give some examples of what you foresee, what you predict will be some of the silver linings that come from this? For me personally, or more of like a as a collective family? Um, both. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, I'll start with what first came to mind when you said those words and it is something that I am celebrating as like one of the most profound moments of my life um, that I, you know, you know that I grew up in a military family and um, I lived, oh my gosh, I think I moved eight times total. And that doesn't include just the other travel where you'd like pit stop between a move to Guam, <laughs> you know? So military kid moved around a ton and my family and I, which is my, my parents, dad, mom, and two brothers, I'm in the, I'm in the middle of two boys. Um, we grew up very tough. You know, it was always a very, we are mission oriented and we we're just in service mode. And it was all about duty and honor. And, and my family and I were very, very close, um, which I am so fortunate and grateful for to have that, those relationships. But the one thing that I think that it took a lifetime to work on for all of us was what does it look like to be vulnerable and to be um, sensitive and and warm. And so there was always, always love without a doubt, but love, you know, with the different languages that there are, it was always showed in a way that was just acts of service and, you know, maybe like showing up for you and, um, and so there wasn't this tenderness and this mm -hmm. softness and all that backstory to say that, you know, in the midst of this crisis, 
Jacob and I, we, it was very hard for us to decide whether we were supposed to stay in New York or leave and go be with our families, which is down in Virginia. And there was a part of us that was like, okay, what is the, you know, the responsible thing to do about like safety and security and not knowing like what would happen to the city. Uh, but there was also this you know, we're New Yorkers and we can weather it out and we stand together. <laughs> so this desire to definitely hold on to our independence and stay in New York. And then this um, this opportunity uh, with Mural and Studio Elsewhere came up and it was just for sure that this was the right place. And mm -hmm. so being away from family, um, I have my mom and calling every day and we, we talk and um, I, I, my dad learned how to text, so we're texting and we talk occasionally and then my brothers are reaching out and it's like, it's so amazing that the, for the first time in my whole life, without skipping a beat, like we say, I love you on the phone uh -huh. every time. And I did not grow up hearing those words. I, I kid you not, I might've heard it like less than five times in my wow. whole life. Wow. And that's not me like shaming or, or knocking on my family. It was just different. It was just yeah. a different way right. of how they showed love. And so to actually kind of break through and be like, and normalizing what is the most important thing you can hear, right? Mm -hmm. The simple words of I love you, but that means so much from the people that, you know, are your family. It's like, wow, it is just really, it is, it continues to change me and, and, I just feel Im immense more like love and just beautiful things happening that I'm like so thankful in the midst of something that could be so scary and only sure. dark. Um, yeah. I mean, what more <laughs> like yeah. that biggest silver lining of my life probably. Yeah. Right. It's like it took a pandemic for us to say the yeah. words that we should always be saying, but we, right. we just weren't used to it, you know? Yeah. You know, what's interesting is I remember when I was getting ready to launch um, to space for six months, I started realizing all the things that I wasn't going to see for six months mm -hmm. that I that I thought I would miss. And I, I did, in fact, miss. I mean, simple things like just the, the wind on your face or, you know, hearing the, the sound of the birds or, you know, the mist on, the, on, a, on a lake, you know, <laughs> in the morning. And what dawned on me is it took the impending separation from the planet of six months for me to realize the miracles that I was surrounded by and mm -hmm. the beauty that I was surrounded by and the awe and wonder that I was surrounded by constantly every moment of every day. And so, you know, one of the silver linings I think for me uh, during this is, is again, you know, when you, when you're removed from things, when you, things that, that you thought would always be there, and and they're just part of the they're part part of the fabric of life. You know, they're yeah. permanent permanent fixtures. Um, when they're not there, uh, we we tend to appreciate things uh, a, a lot more. And so that's so true. So how about uh, how about silver linings for for just general silver linings for for communities and and civilization as a whole? Um, man. Oof. I don't know if it's too soon to know. I mean, do yeah. you have anything that comes to mind? I, I hope I hope we see more unity. Uh, I and I hope even now, in the midst of this, people are watching out for each other, and I, I know that they are. Um, yeah. And and maybe neighbors that they they never met, but but they see them every Tuesday putting the garbage can out. They don't see them for a couple of Tuesdays, and they're wondering what's going on, and they check on them. And so yeah. we we hopefully what will come one of the silver linings will be a, a greater sense of community. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, a family, you know, of, of, of yeah. one human family. So yeah. we also had the question about the playlist, and I see Keith Heitner popped in. He could he could have a really good playlist, but uh, I don't think that's going to be a recharge playlist. That would be more of a, a rock and roll playlist. And Kunal jumped in, and he and he says he loves oh, you. Kunal, he loves you too, yeah, Asian. <laughs> so what do you do? You have a, do you have a, a a playlist for Susanna for the a recharge? So. Um you know what you can do if you have one, you can put it later when this is all over. You can put it at a yes. comment, in a that's comment. What in I was going to say yeah. is 
actually, um, Tim and Jacob are working right now on distribution for the embassy music. And oh, that cool. is that we are using in the hospitals. And so very soon we will have it um, made available. Awesome. Yes. Hajin, can you take us on a little, is it possible to take us on a little tour and show oh, us some yeah. stuff? Absolutely. Do you think it would be better to flip the camera? Uh, it's up to you. I don't know. Okay. Oh, yeah. It's fine. Okay. Let's see. This is like the Wizard of Oz moment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's Murel. Hey, how are you? Hey, Murel. How are you? Hey. It's, it's... Okay, I'm flipping it. Hi. Good to see you. Hi. How are you doing? Good to Good see your eyes. Good to see you, Ron. <laughs> 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 yes, exactly. Can you can you give us just a couple of, of, of thoughts on the on the the project you have and and uh, how it's working? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, can, you been... can you introduce yourself for folks that, that might not know you? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm Mirel Phillips. I am the uh, founder of Frontline Strong and Relief, as well as Studio Elsewhere. Um, so I've been working with Mount Sinai for over a year in innovating environments that work across human performance, um, emotional regulation, uh, PTSD. And so we had, we think a lot about how an environment, you know, spaces themselves can have an actual impact on um, our psychology, our mood, our well-being in general. So when COVID happened, um, I started working with Dr. David Petrino, who's the head of the Abilities Research Center here, um, to think about how we could just use what we had already developed together and just get it to the people who were most in need of it. So that started about a month and a half ago. Um, I'm so lucky that we have who you know is absolutely incredible artist, um, at Embassy Jacob and Hedgen. And we came in and uh, started just deploying something called recharge rooms that I'm sure she's shared more about. And what we've seen from doing this is actually how being artist designers in the midst of this can have a profound impact. Because we're Definitely. working day in and day out of the hospital, working across different um, medical teams, leadership teams, as well as research scientists themselves. So really innovating and creating things um, that have a real time impact. And that to me has been incredibly humbling. We are seeing stress reductions of people who come through our spaces at a, between 60 and 70 percent of self-reported decrease in stress levels. And these are these are doctors and nurses and uh, this other, is our frontline teams. Yeah who sure. obviously are going through and we're right now we're been in the uh, what this peak is of the of experiencing the trauma and that's where you've heard about the wave that's going to come in a few months of when the PTSD actually starts yeah you know really yeah. coming through so it's been really important to us to have an impact during this window to create interventions as well that are can have durability very cool so um I guess you guys had some uh, a delivery yesterday of some orchids or something. Yeah, <laughs> we're actually gearing up to do our second drop today. So we, if you can just wrap your head around this, ten thousand. <laughs> I mean, obviously you. We can have some to show you actually. They're wrap the yourself room. around a lot of things because um, you you know what kind of bigger pictures are. But um, you know, to the orchid is actually in the natural world um, the flower of both beauty and resilience. So it was this just, we found a wonderful donor in a company called The Sill. And we started plotting this of how to get 10,000 orchids from a farm in Ohio to the middle of ground zero in New York to oh, wow. all of our hospital workers. So we prepared a deployment to eight hospitals and over the past 24 hours. And it's just been, you know, like, we know how much just that small act of like beauty and especially with Mother's Day, it's right. Nurse Appreciation Week. There's so many things, a lot of um, 
wards are converting over from COVID wards. So it, it just is a moment to step back and reflect of the, you know, in a small way, the incredible amount of work and appreciation there yeah. is. So what, what, what were some of the reactions to handed folks or orchids? Oh, gosh, it was just, you know, they see it. And it's actually something when you visually see so much beauty. Oh, kind of all the colors once. and patterns. Mm -hmm. And I think that there's something that's really special of knowing that this is a gift for you. You know, yeah, and yeah, yeah. something that we work on is that hospital environments are just incredibly sensory negative. Mm -hmm. And so you are in spaces all day where everything that is in your sensory environment is actually depleting you. Right. There is no ability to reset that. So just to be in a moment where you see thought, care, empathy, and just this, you know, something that seems delicate, but is actually incredibly strong, resilient, and beautiful. It's just so nice. Especially for people who spend their day giving care and empathy, right? Yeah. I mean, and that's they're, they're, they're giving it out, and now it's good to... Yeah. So they have this, um, in fact, I think the thank you was thank you for your extraordinary care. And I, I mean, my, you know... On the research nerdy side, I've been studying um, centennials. So, so these populations in places like Japan, where the average age is above above 100, and the one thing that they all share in common is that they all have gardens. Mm -hmm. So we know what the link is between, you know, the fact that just taking care of things that are natural actually has a it impact on our own well-being so that's something that i'm super passionate about and i'm so glad we got to get them to them all right well we have a question from susanna who says can you recommend additional re reading vis-a-vis -vis the impact of spaces on psychology yes okay <laughs> <laughs> well i'm, I'm, I'm it? <laughs> yeah i mean there's a lot of there's probably a lot of different things to be thinking about and we're actually trying to do um bridge a lot of gaps in real time. Um, I would say that if you just look into, there's different writers who write about this, but Bill Browning and um, the principles of biophilic design is such a great one to start with to understand what is the neuroscience behind this? What is the research? This is all also happening. Um, this is in, the recent years that more and we're we're here to add to what that growing knowledge is so principles of biophysical design bill browning awesome. <laughs> awesome what is there anything else in the space that you you guys could show us yes okay let's give a little flip are we do, do we lose do we lose muriel no he's here okay all right Let's have a little tour. Have a tour. So usually when, I'm not sure if you see our frontline nurses come in, they do a little hand sanitation. I'm saying I'm gonna speak in a little voice. What, is, what does the sign say? It just says, welcome Well, hero. this is actually worth saying. Welcome hero, please sanitize. <laughs> P.S. Do not ingest. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have a low voice because they're actually in use right now. So okay. we have an area that's used for resting. So I heard, I heard, I heard bird sounds. Is that? Yeah. Those are two areas that we developed and just had individual spaces, so spaces where somebody can come and take a 20 minute nap or have a private um, immersive biophilic experience. This is where, we're, in this area, usually is where we've kind of created a little lounge environment where workers come sometimes to have a meal, to sit down, take a break. Um, we have an area where we distribute snacks to them too, so we try to have really nourishing snacks. We have a, something that just kind of came up uh, with having a gratitude wall, and because the gratitude wall became so big, Hajin actually put Hey, hey Jin, we're having a hard time hearing you. Uh, I think we need to be, if you could be a little closer, we'll be able to hear, I think. Sorry. No worries. 
Edgen actually put together this amazing um, guest book so that we actually have the frontliners write little messages wow. to each other, to us. It's so sweet. Um, and we have photographers who are volunteers. And so they created this, what we call the wall of awesome. <laughs> so you can kind of, it's kind of keeping track of the people who come into the space, all these different teams um, that come in here, recognizing them and everyone loves to see other teammates because a lot of frontliners have been deployed to other areas in the hospital. So the teams have been separated. This is actually where they come together. <laughs> Hi, Pip. Yeah, Pip's, Pip's making herself known. Come up here. To the recharge room. So, okay. Hi, guys. Might have, we're going to bring in somebody to capture this. So, let me ask Ron, do you have a favorite type of environment that you like? Something that you find nice to relax to? Uh, space is good. Space is good. <laughs> Uh, is there anything how about a campfire? How about a campfire? Okay. All right, let's try that out. Hi, hey, guys. Google. You want to say hi? Activate call. Hi. So, Aziz, I want to give you something. So, I'm really into mountains and lakes, and there is your campfire. Oh, wow. <laughs> and and there's uh, aromatherapy, too, right? In, in the yes. Unfortunately, there's no scent, scent of smell on this on the live stream. But what we have is there's actually scent. Um, we change it throughout the day, and what you'll start hearing is there's the, both the sounds of the nature environment, and there's also the corresponding music that we custom did with um, Embassy, which is so cathartic and beautiful. So each one is kind of custom to what the experience is meant to be. That's beautiful. So right now um, is, you you know, the start of a song they wrote called Arctic, which is just absolutely gorgeous. I'm sure it is. Is that the, is that the crackling of the fire that we hear? Yes. Awesome. Super. I, I'm feeling relaxed, right? Mm. Well, we're gonna. Um, yep. uh, one thing that we have coming up is we're actually starting to work on a research grant to think about space health as well, um, especially in times with a lot of loneliness and isolation, because there's a lot that happens here that is applicable too. So I'm sure we'll be in conversation about that all together. Yeah. Well, thanks, Muriel. We really appreciate the, the tour and uh, everything that you're doing. Thank you so much for, for putting this together. And and you're making a big difference, in, and your team is making a big difference in, in a lot of people's lives. So. We're just, you know, we're happy to be of service in the time that it's really needed. Yeah. And I'm lucky to have, uh, you know, friends, colleagues, in the same people you know as well. Well, you guys are multipliers. So <laughs> you're force multipliers. <laughs> so you're you're multiplying the good that's being done by everybody. So thank you. All right. All right, that is beautiful. Thanks, guys. Hey. Enjoy. Thank you. All right, where where are you taking us? Okay, so that was one of the, the um, this is the main room, but uh, like I mentioned earlier, we have now converted several of uh, the staff rooms in different ICU wards, and we are about to convert um, one of the atriums here. Oh, wow. Yeah, and so very, very obviously very high ceilings. Actually, there are... are um, real plants there, but we're, you know, playing around with ideas of what that could look like to utilize that grandeur of the space, sure. the openness, and then, all, you know, we're very interested in movement. So what does it look like to not just have someone sitting in the space, but really like 
whether it's like interacting, kind of walking through, maybe perhaps forest bathing or, or something. So it's really exciting. Yeah. So um, what does the timeline look like? I mean, how long do you guys think you'll be there doing this? And um, is this something that's going to be duplicated elsewhere? Um, what are your thoughts? Yeah, we've all kind of been um, wondering about the timeline uh, in terms of what's, you know, COVID-19. But for us, we really would like to um, work for the long haul. And uh, most of the questions I get asked, um, are why why is this here for us it's almost like yeah. this undeserving humility of just like do we get this and then of course i'm like yes this is for you and then the second question is just is this gonna go away no. <laughs> i don't i like i really i'm gonna work so hard that if this is just you know yeah. a mainstay and and i tell people I'm like i it's really our dream to for it to not go away so to how yeah to to normalize this this much needed space yeah. and work because of such positive effects um and so i can't really say the timeline we know we want to continue building long term so whether things do hopefully slow down with um covid19 it doesn't mean that this work doesn't matter um you know Right. in general no no of course and so um, that stress remains <laughs> the, yeah the... we started here at um mount sinai what we're calling mount sinai east uh at 90 east 98th street and then have expanded to beth israel which is in um i think it's the east village Hi, Pip. this is this is my uh my on wonder partner shelter sheltered in place <laughs> amazing yeah, what never put that on the list. Must get an animal right now. Perfect time to get an animal right now and just yeah. hug your animal, yeah. and your heart rate will go down. And you'll just, it's just like yeah, emotional support animal. Of course, she keeps throwing toys at me to to play with it with. Her, so she should just be a part of it. Yeah, we have things to talk about. <laughs> well, so yeah, um, so here Upper East, um, down in I think what. It might be East Village or Lower East Side, and then um, Mount Sinai West is next. So okay, that's really exciting. Awesome. Yeah, and then I mean, there is even um, talks about expanding to Queens, and that's so needed. And so we will do what we, what we can. It's kind of amazing that the all the, these things don't exist in every hospital. I mean, already it really is. You we you know we always ask ourselves that question of like why is it stem and not steam right yeah and why is it not why why do the and that's why the nature of the interdisciplinary work is like are they really separate are they or is one more important than the other you know we have to ask ourselves these things yeah. i really love that um you know the symbology of like the immersion of um science and art and you know equating to wonder right and that's really we is kind of like the space that we live yeah. in is like to evoke that feeling to it it's it's something that is always available to us like you said earlier yeah. that's two two sides you of the same can, coin too i mean yeah, you can just notice all the wondrous things that is life around but and that is probably the silver lining that people will take away is all of the things that I thought mattered that I've been stripped away from my comforts and conveniences yeah. now can actually live with less and maybe less is good. Maybe less is better for our planet and each other and taking care of each other. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, wonder is, you know, even the noticing the simplest, like I always, even walking around in Brooklyn, noticing what little trees we have, but they're still so beautiful. And you see a bird and you're like, whoa, <laughs> if you see like a colorful bird in Brooklyn, I mean, I'm amazed. I'm just like, where did you come from foreign creature? <laughs> it's just like, but yeah, there's just always little things to, yeah. to be grateful for and notice. Well, and, and we've known each other for, I guess, like nine years now. Is that about right? Because we met, we met just out, times. yeah, we met we met just outside of the UN, across the street from the UN, 
there, there was a, a screening, an outdoor screening of the movie Planetary, uh, mm -hmm. directed by our friend Guy Reed. And uh, we were there for that screening. Um, and that's where we met. I remember it like it was yesterday. You had on a pretty awesome shirt. What shirt are you wearing today? It might be that shirt. No, it's just a black shirt. Just a black oh, okay. shirt. Yeah, we were just standing together and I said, hey, I really like your shirt. And you were like, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. like, I think a couple hours later. is Because we I had taken talking. that shirt for granted. I mean, I just. I know, but, you know, I noticed these little subtle things and I'm like. This guy is, yeah, he likes space. I'm into that. <laughs> Instant friends right there. Yeah, yeah. And little yeah. did we know, years and years of different adventures together and just awesome friendship, the whole family. Well, shout out to Scott Weaver, a buddy from uh, Han Air Base back in the day, is, is, is watching as well. Um, do you have anything that you want to leave folks with? Any advice, any, any lessons learned from your time down at Mount Sinai or just your time during this, this crisis? Um, I guess it, it's a lesson that I'm learning for myself right now of, you know, what does it look like to not fight? the discomfort, to not fight the new feelings that most people might be experiencing that are uncomfortable. And to just say, what is this teaching me right now? On an individual level, but also for our planet. And I love, I love seeing that conversation happening. Um, I think it's so necessary and important. And so for me, even as I do this work, and sometimes we, we always joke around because we're here in this basement. We don't know what time it is most time, you know, we don't know if the sun is set. We come outside and we're like, it's nighttime, <laughs> you know? And it's just so funny, but um, where was I going with that? I'm sorry? Oh, I just, yeah, I, I lost my thought, but- No, that's um, okay. But, uh... What I, what I feel is like, yeah, back to what I'm learning for myself is I, I don't have time right now, to be honest, to just create space for myself. And that is very unusual for me mm. because I, I really live with such intention of like designing life, designing my story as each of us do, mm -hmm. whether it's intentional or conscious or sub not conscious. And so to say, if I'm right, I do feel like I am in a, a very particular service mode that I, I welcome and I, I feel honored by, you know, that I, oh, many things that happened in my life got me to this place that says I'm equipped to handle what's happening right now. Um, but so to go home and to try and find that, create that space, um, I've had to, to struggle with my own feelings of is everything going to be okay? Do we have to have the answers? Is if I'm feeling kind of like in a dark place, is that okay? And I think as I've been, you know, on my own path and, and wrestling with my own questions, yeah, I actually, the joke with Jacob is like, you know, their moment where like Rilo Ken is fighting the dark side of the force <laughs> in Star Wars. And I'm like, the dark side is very real, but it doesn't have to be something that is this such a scary thing that it's all consuming and you have to run away from it. I think it's almost worse to run away. Yeah. And so what does it look like to just kind of not judge yourself for how you're feeling and accept you know, and just say like, you know, I am in a crappy mood right now, or I am really scared right now, and that's okay. Yeah. And so um, I think that is that message that I myself am going through it. I, I might not, you know, there are so many moments of gratitude and, and joy when you're face to face with, you know, beautiful people and helpers, and we're all making whatever difference we can with this, this time that we're given. But then also, you know, it's full spectrum. It's like, it, it does, it's not always going to be happy, fun times. And right. right now 
there is a big lesson. I, I do believe that there is a, a big teaching that is coming back to the silver lining, com coming out of this season of hopefully, you know, waking up and, and, and really rewriting the story, you know, our, our collective story right. and, and, and hopefully leaning into imagination of like, where, where do we actually want to all go? And, and how do we want to get there together? Yeah. Do we, so want to return, I, do we want to return to the upside down status quo that yeah, we came from? Right? Exactly. And I, I personally feel this, you know, frustration when I hear the, I can't wait for things to go back to normal. And I'm like, did you really want it to go back to normal? <laughs> you never you normal. remember what norm, <laughs> quote unquote normal was? Yeah, yeah. Most people are struggling in life from your, the version of normal that it's like, we yeah, all are yeah. like, you right. know, some of us are fighting the good fight. So yeah. whether, yeah. Well, I mean, so, you, you, you brought up something really in, important and that's that we're, that we're, there's a learning that's coming from this, right? There's, and, and there is darkness, right? And these are, these in a lot of ways are, are dark times are uncomfortable times are painful times are heartbreaking times, but all growth occurs in darkness, right? I mean, all, and all growth occurs with some level of discomfort and, and, and potentially pain and everything else. And so the, the what, what, what I keep coming back to is the fact that we're paying this price anyway. So we might as well get a benefit for the price that we're that we're having to pay anyway, the heartbreaking price that we're, we're paying. Mm -hmm. And you know, for me, I've, I've the two big takeaways that I've gotten so far during this this um, this crisis is one, you know, we have to separate what's real from what's not real, right? And the the two things that I know for absolute certainty are real is love is real and our ability to choose between light and dark is real good and bad um you know life and and you know further furthering the blossoming of life or, or impeding it you know those choice that choice is real the choice of that we as individuals choose whether we want to go with light or go with the darkness if we want to let our own darkness our own negative thoughts weigh us down or we can choose we have the the, the freedom to choose to take a different path um and to take mm -hmm. the path towards lightness uh and you know, with the foundation that love is real, um, is, is I think a really powerful foundation. Yeah. That's so beautiful. So we should, should we stop with that? <laughs> I don't, I mean, so many tangents of my own branches are like, Oh, I could just talk forever. Yeah. yeah. I, I could, I could too. It's, it's, it's wonderful seeing you, even if it's just the top half of your face <laughs> and, and, uh, uh, thank you so much for what, what you guys are doing, what you and Jacob and, and Muriel and, and everybody are, are doing. Uh, They're a really incredible team. Yeah. They all deserve all the shout outs and hugs and one day bonfires and, you know, beverages. <laughs> coming soon. Yeah. It's so needed. Yeah, it is. So keep up the, keep up the good work. And, and don't forget that you don't do anybody any good if, if you yourself are, are getting too stressed out and too, and, and not rejuvenating yourself and refreshing yourself. So um, make sure that you, that self-care is uh, at the top of your list as well. Uh, yes. Yes. Always constant reminder. Thank you for being a friend and for inviting me to speak with you and just for being you. Ah, uh, thanks, Adrian. All right, everybody, we're going to, we're going to close this version. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, uh, like I said, this is, this is all about trying to navigate this crisis and coming out the other side stronger and more unified. Uh, and we'll be back next week. So everybody, thank you and see you next week.